Welcome to my channel. Today, I will discuss the 2020 movie titled 2067. Without further ado, let's get started. The year is 2067 and the oxygen is contaminated. People who breathe it eventually develop a deadly sickness. There is only one city in the world still running on electricity and holding on while the other countries are cut off and in complete darkness. A group of workers, among them Ethan White, are trying to fix the nuclear core overload in the utility tunnel. The situation escalates, but they manage to reroute the power and turn the electricity back on. Outside of the tunnel, a man is protesting and yelling oxygen is not a privilege. People around are not listening to what he's saying, so he sets himself on fire as a suicide protest. Ethan arrives at his flat. TV is on, and the reporter mentions the leading distributor of Synthetic 02, Chronic Corp, committed to finding the solution to the oxygen crisis. Ethan's wife Xanthi walks in, and he shows her the new mask he brought for her. They fool around for a while, and Xanthi starts coughing out blood. The next day, Ethan is forcibly taken from his workplace to the headquarters of Chronic Corp, the largest supply of breathable air. Regina Jackson, the toe of particle research, welcomes Ethan and one of his colleagues, Jude, and tells Ethan he was invited because he might be able to save all of them from the oxygen rejection epidemics. She brings them to the lab, and one of the scientists refers to Ethan as the one. The scientists are working on the time machine that has so far taken them 20 years to complete. They sent the radio waves by the time machine, but they bounced back, and the message was received from 407 years into the future, saying, send Ethan White. Regina claims the people who sent the message must have found the cure for the oxygen sickness, and she wants to send Ethan through the time machine. Regina adds it's a one-way trip, and they don't yet know how to bring him back from the future once he goes there. In the local cafe where people are buying oxygen shots, Ethan and Jude contemplate Regina's proposal. Ethan tells him his father left a suicide note to him when he was eight years old. He remembers the first time Jude brought him down to the tunnels and told him without the darkness, there is no light. Jude tells Ethan that if he wants to prove he is not like his father, he should accept Regina's suggestion and save his wife, Xanthi. Ethan remembers his eighth birthday. His father made a box for Ethan that they unwrapped together. Richard warns Ethan putting his hand in the box will hurt a little, but it will help him become who he is meant to be. He also tells him he will need to make a choice whether he wants to believe in something bigger and have faith in people. Ethan decides to place his hand in the box and it puts a wrist device around his hand. Back in the present day, Ethan is arguing with his wife regarding his journey to the future. Xanthi thinks he should go as she sees this opportunity as a second chance. And Ethan is afraid of leaving her and making things even worse by leaving. Ethan leaves a flower-shaped note to his wife saying, I will find my way back to you and exits the apartment. In the research facility, Regina and the scientists prepare a spacesuit for Ethan. He is also given Archie, a hand-sized computer for navigation, communication, and system analysis. Ethan gets sent through time and falls into the rainforest. His suit is caught on fire, but he manages to free himself. Archie is unable to locate the location and establish the link with the lab. As he is walking towards the structure Archie located, Ethan encounters a skeleton of a man with the name tag Ethan White. He takes off the hand device from the skeleton of the other Ethan and listens to the recording of Ethan's final moments. The night falls and Archie helps Ethan light a fire in the forest. A storm comes in, followed by the heavy rain. Ethan gets wet and throws up, and a man appears, who stabs Ethan. Ethan wakes up by the fire, and the man informs him he poisoned himself by eating gall berries. The man turns out to be Jew who injected the antidote into Ethan's blood system. He tells him he grabbed a second suit at the lab and couldn't let him go all by himself. Ethan and Jude enter another building where they find a dusty computer and the words welcome Ethan White. Ethan activates it. The Deanna sample gets initiated. His hand starts bleeding from the device and they are granted access into the very same Hail Mary lab they've been in before. The device on Ethan's hand turns from the color red to green, just like the one on Skeleton's hand. Ethan tells the computer to decode the system logs, and the hologram of his father Richard appears, and the diary entries saying they will eventually be able to send a matter through time. Jude and Ethan look at the log in which Richard, as his team of scientists, sent the pink through the time machine for the first time, and the message they received mentioning Ethan's name. There seems to be a power grid problem, and Archie tells them there is not enough power to get them back to 2067. 
the grid is doing a countdown of four hours before the nuclear explosion, and Jude and Ethan are arguing over what needs to be done next. They finally decide to head to the tunnels, fix the nuclear core, and try to find the cure before the time is up. They rush from the forest towards the city, only to realize there are no people and the infrastructure is abandoned and covered in grass. Ethan finds another skeleton and concludes the humans never found a way to survive. They find a classroom door with the name Mrs. Xanthi White, and Ethan realizes his wife died along with her students. Ethan recalls his childhood and the moment after he was given a hand bracelet. His father called him and told him to go for a walk with his mother, and they were followed by a robber who shot Ethan's mother. Jude found him and saved him. Back at the present moment, Ethan is upset for failing his wife and turning out the same as his father. A record from the hand computer starts playing. Upset by what he heard, Jude takes out an actual gun. Ethan tells Jude to give him the gun as Archie is doing the countdown of two hours to the explosion. They find a way to the tunnel and locate the core of the problem and emergency reroute is required. The grid activates the evacuation of the service chamber and the door starts closing down. Jude tries to stop it so Ethan could enter, but Ethan stays outside to save Jude. Ethan pulls the plug before falling down on the ground. Power is restored and the nuclear core activated. They arrive back to the lab as the grid is declaring there are 37 minutes left until the portal launch. Ethan is upset because he now believes they are only turning the pages of the future without having the power to change or influence anything. Ethan tells the grid to play the log on the date of his birthday, and hears his father saying they've made a huge mistake by getting involved in God's playground. Ethan locks Jude in one of the supply chambers and listens to the rest of the log entry. His father admits he did all of this for him, to give him the life he never had. He regrets not being there for him. Regina has an argument with Richard. She doesn't believe there is a cure anymore or that humanity can be saved, and she is skeptical of Richard's faith. Richard tells her he has locked the portal and only Ethan's Deanna can unlock it. Regina shoots Richard and tells Jude he is now going to be the boy's guardian. Ethan tries to stop the process of launching. Jude, who has also lost faith in finding the cure, takes out his gun and attacks Ethan but ends up shooting himself. Regina is preparing to travel through time with a group of her distinguished friends, and she orders to shoot Ethan once he arrives. Ethan stops the launching and destroys the computer. He also sends the plants through the time machine necessary for ecological regeneration. Ethan goes back to the city in the year of 2474 and realizes the city is no longer uninhabited, and his mission has succeeded after all. Thank you for watching the recap. Kindly subscribe to our channel to get notified when we post the next recap. See you next time.